Hello everyone, welcome back to American Textbook Reading. I'm Brian Stewart. Well, we're on the last unit of the book, Unit 15. We're continuing the theme of land and water. We're going to be looking at places on Earth. As you can see in these pictures, there are many different places on the Earth. So in this unit, you will discover different types, different types of land and water. As you can see in these pictures, we have many different types of land and water. Let's get started with the first one. The first one is mountain. Mountain, very tall mountains, as you can see in this picture. A mountain is the highest type of land, the highest type of land. The most high, of course, don't say most high, it's the highest, it's the highest place that you can go on Earth is in a mountain. Where is the highest place you can go on Earth? Do you know the highest mountain? It's Mount Everest, right? Mount Everest is the highest place, a very tall mountain. Mount Everest is the highest place on land. That would be a mountain. What about a plain? If you talk about a mountain, it's like the opposite of a mountain is a plain because mountains are very tall and mountains are very steep, but a plain is very flat. A plain is a large, flat piece of land. You can see forever, right? You don't see any trees, uh, you don't see any mountains, you don't see any hills, just very flat land, a very large plain. And usually animals live on the plains. Large groups of animals will live together and run across the plains and they eat the plants that grow on the plain. Okay, we also have a desert, and a desert is a very different type of place. It's a very beautiful place, as you can see, but it's also a difficult place to live. Why is it so difficult? Because a desert is a very dry area of land. There's not much water, or very, very little water in a desert. So plants and animals can't live there. It's very difficult for living things to live in a desert. You see these people here, they're just passing through. They have to get out of the desert to find some plants and water in order to survive, right? So they're just passing through. Okay, we also have a river. Now a river is much different than a desert, right? A river has got lots of water in it, right? And usually we find rivers in mountains, but also on plains. This river is going through a mountain here, and it's going pretty fast. A river is a large stream of moving water, moving water. The river means that the water is moving. If it's not moving, we call it something different. We'll get to that in a second. But the river means that the water is moving. Now there's another word here that's interesting, a stream. <clears throat> So we have streams and we have rivers. Streams are usually smaller, right? If there's just a little bit of water and maybe you can step across it, we call that a stream. Rivers are larger. It's more difficult to cross a river. You can't jump over it. You can't step over it. You have to walk through it or be very, very careful. Uh, sometimes you have to swim across a river, but be careful crossing a river. Don't cross the river unless an adult is with you, or maybe there's a bridge, or the river isn't moving very fast. But be very careful around rivers because it's moving water. It could be dangerous. Okay. Also, we have valleys. You will find, where do you find valleys? Do you find valleys on plains? No, you wouldn't find valleys and plains because valleys mean that you have two sides, right? Plains are very flat. So you would find a valley where? That's right, in the mountains, right? So on either side you have mountains and between the mountains you have a valley because a valley is the low land between mountains and hills, okay? So when you have a mountain, right, the land goes up on either side 
between those, you have a valley. And some valleys are very beautiful. People put houses in there. Uh, of course, valleys are easy that you can come up into the mountains. You go through the valley, and that's how you get up into the mountains, an easier way than climbing up the side of the mountain, which is very difficult. Okay. Remember I said that a river <clears throat> is moving water. If the water is not moving, then we can call it a lake. One thing we can call it is a lake. A lake is a large area of fresh water, right? Rivers and streams are usually fresh water. And if the river stops moving and it, and it grows in area, we call that a lake. And of course, we find many lakes and mountains, but you can find lakes in all sorts of places, right? Also on the plains, in hills, but in mountains also especially. This is a very beautiful lake in the mountain. It's a small lake. Some lakes are really, really big. You can't see across them. But if it's fresh water, we call it a lake, not an ocean, right? So fresh water is a lake. Okay, <clears throat> also we have a hill. A hill is just a higher part of a land, right? Sometimes, of course, you have plains, right? And sometimes the plains will stop and their land will rise gently. Not very steeply like a mountain, but a very gentle rise. And the land won't go up very high. We call these areas hills. And especially if you have a lot of hills, it's very gentle, you can call them rolling hills. Rolling hills. Because it seems like, whoa, rolling hills, it seems like the land is rolling, right? Seems very gentle and very nice. So hills are a higher area of land, and they're fun to run up and run down. And when the winter comes and there's snow on the hill, you can take a sled and slide down the hill. Okay. We also have an interesting type of land called an island. In the ocean, you can find islands, but you can also find islands in lakes sometimes, too, if the lake is very big. An island is just a piece of land with water all around it, all around it, like these. We have two islands here. There's water all around these pieces of land, right? So we call these islands. By the way, we don't pronounce the S in island. It's just island, not island, 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 okay? So an island is an, uh, a piece of land with water all the way around it. Some islands are very beautiful, especially in the Pacific Ocean. Very beautiful, nice beaches. Uh, they're very beautiful islands in the ocean. Okay. Well, we've talked about a lot of different types of land, okay? And, of course, we're talking about land and water. So we have two different uh, groupings we can make for places on the earth we, when we're talking about different types of land or different types of water. Now, what we've looked at in land, we've looked at four basic uh, types of land. We've looked at a mountain, right? Mountains are very tall. They are very steep. Desert, a desert is a place where there is very little or no water. It's a very dry area. We've looked at a valley. Remember, a valley is, a, is the area between two mountains or hills. It's the low area between two mountains and hills. And usually, there's a river at the bottom of the valley or a stream. Then we have plains. Plains are very flat pieces of land, right? A lot of animals will run around on the plains. So these are our four main types of land, our four main types of land. But we're also talking about water. We looked at different types of water. And we saw stream and river. Well, we kind of talked about those together, right? I said a stream is a small uh, area of moving water. You can step across it or you can jump across it. That's a stream. Rivers are wider. You have to, uh, you know, walk across them. You have to get your feet wet or sometimes you have to swim across them. But be very careful with rivers because they can be dangerous. This river, this uh, looks like, it's, they say it's a river so the water must be moving. Remember, the water must be moving to, for it to be a river, but this looks like a very calm river. The river is not moving very fast. Also, we saw a lake. A lake, of course, is fresh water. 
And we didn't really talk about ocean, but we talked about ocean before in the book. Ocean is salt water. And of course, we talked about the big five main oceans of the world, right? Oceans are very, very big and they have salt water. So an important thing to remember, a lake has fresh water and an ocean has salt water, okay? So salt water in the ocean, fresh water in the lake. And of course, streams and rivers are also fresh water. So we have our two main groupings here. We have four different types of land and we have four different types of water that we're looking at in this lesson. Okay, let's move on to our word matching exercise. We're going to take the words and match them to the definitions. What are our words? Our words are mountain, mountain, plain, plain, desert, desert. Not dessert, right? Dessert is SS, and that's what you eat after dinner. But we're talking about desert, desert. Okay, river river, valley, valley, and lake, lake. So we can't talk about all of them. We only have six, not eight. But let's talk about these six words here and match them to their definitions. Number one, a very dry area of land. The key word here is dry. It's very dry. All, no water or very, very little water. Remember what we talked about? It's very difficult for plants and animals to live there. What is it? Of course, it's a desert, a desert. Okay, number two, the highest type of land. So very high. Remember the highest place on earth? We call it Everest, we call it Mount Everest. Mount, of course, is for mountain. So the highest type of land is a mountain. Okay, very steep too. Okay, number three. A large flat piece of land, right? You can look out, you can see very far, right? And usually there's not many trees on it. You can see very far, many animals run around on this area of land. It's very flat. We call that area a plain, right? Our key word here is flat. It's very flat piece of land. Okay, number four, a large area of fresh water. A large area of fresh water, the water is probably not moving, right? So what do we call that? Remember, it's fresh water, not salt water. So we call that area a lake. Okay, a large stream of moving water. Two words here, large and moving water. So it's large, it's not a stream. A stream is small. So it's a large air stream of moving water. The water is moving. And it's not staying still like a lake, it's moving. What do we call that? Of course, we call that a river, a river. Okay, number six, the lowland between mountains and hills. So we have two mountains. We have lowland between the two mountains, right? Usually a river runs through it. What do we call that area? We call that a valley. So a valley is the low land between two mountains or two hills. Okay, so those are our words. Let's take a look at two kinds of water on earth. And I kind of talked about those already a little bit. But we can see salt water, we can see fresh water, right? We talked about uh, salt water is in oceans and fresh water is for lakes and streams and rivers. Let's take a look. Salt water. An ocean is made up of salt water. So if you look at this beautiful water, very beautiful picture, by the way, very nice beach. I want to be there, don't you? Okay, but anyway, if you go into the water, don't drink the water, right? It's salt water. That's horrible. It tastes terrible. You cannot drink the water in an ocean because there's too much salt in it. However, you can drink the water in a lake uh, a river or a stream. Fresh water. Fresh water is water without salt. There's no salt in the water. Rivers and lakes and streams are fresh water. So you can drink this, but be careful. You know, nowadays there's a lot of pollution, so don't just go out and drink the water. Ask your mom or dad if it's safe to drink that water. But usually we can drink 
fresh water in lakes, rivers, and streams. Okay. We have several pictures here. We're going to look at the pictures and then we're going to complete the sentence to best describe the pictures. How can we best describe these pictures? What's our sentence? Our sentence is, the earth has different kinds of beep and water. So remember, what are we talking about in this unit? We're talking about two main groups of things, right? Here we have an ocean, right? So that's a type of water. Here we have a river and mountains, a valley. This is a very beautiful place, by the way. It kind of looks like uh, Yellowstone, where there's a waterfall. I'm not sure if it is or not, but it's a very beautiful place with the uh, mountains and a waterfall is here. By the way, a waterfall is an interesting type of uh, water and land, right? We have a waterfall. Um, so we have uh, mountains, stream, valley in between, a river, and a waterfall here. And over here we have rolling hills, very beautiful rolling hills. So we've talked about water, water, and then over here, what's the opposite of water? The earth has different kinds of land and water. Okay, so very easy. We're talking about different types of land and water. And basically we can divide every place on the earth into these two groups. It's either land or it's water. And there are many types of land and there are many types of water. Okay, let's move on to our true-false questions. A lake is smaller than an ocean. So a lake is smaller than an ocean. Is that true? Yes, that is true. Absolutely. We talked about that. I said there are some lakes that you can't see across. As if it's fresh water, um, sure, it's a lake. But usually oceans are huge. Oceans are very big, especially as we saw in the previous unit, Unit 14. We saw that oceans are very, very big. Lakes are usually smaller or always smaller than oceans. Number two, lakes and rivers are salt water. So lakes and rivers are salt water? You can't drink the water from lakes and rivers? That doesn't sound right. That's false. We need to change salt to fresh. If we did that, then the sentence would be correct. Lakes and rivers are fresh water. That's correct, not salt water. So that's false. Okay, number three, a hill. Remember we talked about the hills, right? A hill is a piece of land with water all around it, right? A hill is a piece of land with water all around it. Does that sound right? Doesn't sound right, right? It's false, okay? So that's false. A hill is just a higher area of land, right? There could be other land all the way around it. But what type of land did we look at that we saw that is special because it has water all around it? Do you remember? Of course, we call that area, we call that place an island. And remember, it's pronounced island. And I, because it's a vowel, we have to say an, an island. An island is a piece of land with water all around it. That would be true, but we have to change the sentence so this sentence is false. Okay, well that wraps up the vocabulary part. Let's take a short break here. We'll come back and take a look at the reading section in just a short bit. Okay, everybody, welcome back to the reading section. We've got a lot of sentences here, of course, in our reading section, and usually the first sentence is our topic sentence, and that's exactly what we've got here. We have our topic sentence. There are many different types of land and water. That's a great topic sentence, isn't it? It describes exactly what we're talking about in this unit. We're talking about two types of land and water. So we have land and water here. There are many different types, types of land and water. So that's what we're talking about here. Now in the sentence, they talked about land first. So that's what we're going to read about first. Usually that's good organization, right? Don't switch them around. Don't say there are many different types of land and water and then talk about water first. That's not good organization, right? Good organization, if you mention land first, then talk about land. And that's exactly what we've got. Our first sentence after that is, a mountain is. So a mountain is 
the highest kind of land. Very simple definition sentence. So we talked about a mountain first. Next, we'll talk about a hill. And the same pattern, the same pattern of sentence. A hill is also high, but it is smaller than a mountain. Um, yeah, a hill is also high, but it is smaller than a mountain. Okay, so we have two definition sentences right after our topic sentence talking about types of land. The third sentence is also talking about land, talking about valleys. There are low valleys. We use there are to talk about plural. There are valleys. There are low valleys between mountains and hills. So we talk about what are valleys. Then we talk about water. Okay, first we talked about land, now we're going to talk about water. And the first type of water we're going to talk about is rivers. Rivers flow toward the ocean. Now flow means move. Remember, rivers are moving water. When water moves, we say that it flows. Okay, so rivers flow toward the ocean. Of course, all rivers go to the ocean, right? That's where all the fresh water uh, goes into the ocean. It becomes salty. Okay, they sometimes go through flat plains, okay? Now we're kind of mixing it up, right? We're talking about water, but we're also talking a little bit about land. So, next, we can grow many kinds of food on plains, whether they are high or low. So that's interesting. We have plains can be high or plains can be low. We have an interesting idea here. We can grow many kinds of food. Okay? So, of course, if plains are flat, we can use them to grow food. Like I said before, a lot of uh, animals will run around on the plains because there are plants growing on those plains. And especially if a river is going through the flat plain, you've got water right there. So, you've got land, you've got water. It's a good place to grow uh, plants and grow crops on plains. Okay, and of course, plains can be high up in a high area. You know, if there's mountainous, suddenly there's a flat piece of land. Those are plains in the mountains, or surrounded by mountains. Also, plains can be lower down in uh, uh, near the uh, ocean, for example, or in lower areas of land. So, plains can be high, plains can be low. We cannot grow food in a dry desert. We cannot grow food. Why? Because it's dry. If you don't have water, you can't grow plants. So, of course, we can't grow food in a dry desert. Okay, a lake, another area of water. Okay, so we, the, the, before we saw a river, we kind of mixed it in with, uh, with different types of land, but now we're talking about a water again. A lake, another area of water. Another area of water? Why do they say another area of water? Because we just talked about a river, right? A river flows down to the ocean. Now we're talking about a lake, which is another area of water besides a river. Has land all around it, so it doesn't flow to the ocean like a river, right? It has land all around it, which is interesting because we talked about an island has water all around it, but a lake is water with land all around it. So lakes and islands are like complete opposites, aren't they? So a lake is another area of water. It has land all around it. So lakes don't flow to the ocean like a river. However, of course, sometimes rivers come out of lakes, right? And they flow to the ocean. But lakes don't flow. Lakes are water surrounded by land that do not move, right? They don't, the water doesn't move in a lake. Okay. An island, I just talked about that, we talked about that, is the opposite of a lake. It's the exact opposite, right? It is an area of land with water all around, right? Water all around for an island. A lake has land all around. So like we said, it's very interesting, they are complete opposites. Okay, now we have our reading skill chart here. It's a very big chart, as you can see. The reading skill topic is classify. So this is a very good unit for this type of organizational structure because we're talking about two different types of places on earth. We have land and we have water. Two different groups. We can classify what types of land there are and what types of water there are. 
and that's what we're doing in this chart. Over here we have land and we have many details about different types of land. Down on the bottom we have water and we have details about different types of water. So let's look at this chart, fill in the blanks with these words on the bottom. Our words are land, flat, between, highest, hill, and rivers. So what, how can we put these words into the details about these types of places on earth? First of all, we're talking about land, and the first type of land we talk about is a mountain. A mountain is the beep kind of land. So remember, we were talking about mountains before. We're talking about mountains. They are very what, right? If you look, wow, there's a mountain very high up there, so we have to say highest is the highest kind of land, right? Okay, down on B, we have A or and beep is smaller than a mountain. So we're looking for an area of land that's high, but smaller than a mountain. Not as high, because a mountain is the highest kind of land. So what word are we looking for? Large, flat, between, highest, hill, rivers. <gasps> hill over here. If you chose hill, you would be correct. A hill is smaller than a mountain. They're both high places of land, but a hill is smaller. A mountain is the highest. Okay, we're also talking about valleys. Valleys are low lands. Where do we find valleys? We find them beep, mountains and hills. What do we put in that beep? Land, flat, between, high, well, highest we already talked about, hill, rivers. Of course, we find valleys between, between mountains and hills. So that's our answer. Valleys are low lands between mountains or hills. Okay, plains is our next type of land. What can we say about plains? What's the important feature about plains that we talked about? Are plains high land? Are they like this? No, plains, remember, are like this. They are what? They are flat. So plains are flat and we grow food on them. Plains are good to grow food on. The next detail about land, we're talking about deserts, there's no uh, blank to fill in, but just remember, the key word about deserts is that they are dry. Deserts are very dry. And that's the key word or the important feature about deserts. Okay, let's move on to water. The first type of water we look at is a lake. Now, a lake is an area of water that has what all around it? It has what all around it? Remember, lakes are the opposite of islands. Islands have water all around it, but a lake has land all around it, right? A lake is an area of water that has land around it. Okay, the next one, F. We don't know what type of water we're talking about because it's missing. So we have to think about the definition. Go toward the ocean. What goes towards the ocean? <gasps> That would be this one right here, right? Rivers. Rivers go toward the ocean. So rivers flow. Rivers move, right? That's the important point about rivers. They're fresh water, but they are moving water. And they are moving towards the ocean. They're going downhill. Okay, so that's our uh, reading skill chart for land and water. Let's take a look at the reading comprehension questions. Uh, the first one is, what is a place where we can grow food? So we're looking for a place where we can do something. What is it? We can grow food. Now remember, we're talking about a place that needs to be flat, right? And it should have water nearby. Let's take a look. A is a desert. Can we grow food in a desert? No, we talked about that. In the desert, there's, very, there's no or very little water. We said it's very difficult for plants and animals to live in a desert because there's no water. So deserts are not a good place to grow food. What about a plain? A plain is very flat. Sometimes they have rivers running through plains, lots of animals running around plains, lots of uh, plants growing on plains. So sure, a plain is a good area that we can grow food on. Can we grow food on rivers? <laughs> Think about that. Remember, rivers are moving water. 
If we put the seeds in the water, they're gone, right? They go down towards the ocean. So of course we can't grow food on rivers. There's many reasons. One of the big reasons is if we try to, they'll, they'll go away, right? Because rivers are moving water. So that's kind of a funny, silly answer, right? Okay, two. On earth, there are valleys between what? By the way, this is kind of a silly part of the sentence, on earth. But it doesn't just have to be on Earth. There are also uh, these things on Mars, right, on different planets. Anytime you have mountains and hills, right, there are valleys between them. So that's what we're looking for. On Earth, we can just ignore this, by the way. We can just start here. There are valleys between what? Deserts and hills? Between deserts and hills, there are valleys? No, because deserts sometimes go like this, and then you have a hill. There's nothing between them. So that's not right. Between rivers and beaches? That doesn't sound right either because when a river comes down to the ocean, the river runs right through the beach, right? And it goes into the ocean. There's no valley there. How about hills and mountains? That's what we're talking about, right? The answer, of course, is hills and mountains. There are valleys between hills and mountains. So sometimes you see these senses and sometimes you kind of think, well, it's not just on earth. Uh, so sometimes you can just ignore parts of the sentence. And in this case, that's true. Because on other planets, there are also valleys between mountains and hills. That's something interesting and very fascinating to think about. But anyway, the important part is valleys are between hills and mountains. Okay. Number three. And island, remember island, is not the same as a lake because why? Remember we talked about this. We said islands and lakes are complete opposites. They're, they're very interesting if you think about it, completely opposite. Because an island is not the same as a lake because why? A, an island is like a river, it flows. An island is land. Does land flow like a river? No, land doesn't flow like a river. It, it, it doesn't move. We can't see it moving. It does move, but it takes a very, very, very long time to move. We can't see it move. So um, that's not true. An island is like a river. Islands don't flow. Uh, B, an island has land all around it. Because an island has land all around it. Think about that. Don't get confused. An island, if an island has land all around it, it's not an island, right? It's just a piece of land. It's not, it doesn't make it an island. What's special about an island? An island has water all around it. An island has water all around it. So B is not correct, but C is. An island is not the same as a lake because an island has water all around it. A lake has land all around it. So a lake has land all around it, but an island has water all around it. So C is the correct choice in that case. Remember, they're like complete opposites, exact opposites of each other. Number four, rivers sometimes go through plains, A, B, C, and they flow up hills and mountains. So do rivers go uphill? Think about that. Does that make sense? Of course not, because gravity is making them go down, right? So that's not true. Rivers don't flow up hills and mountains. They go down towards the river, uh, towards the ocean, sorry. The rivers go down towards the ocean. They do not flow up. That would be against the laws of gravity. Okay, B, and they flow toward the ocean. Rivers sometimes go through plains and they flow toward the ocean. Does that sound right? Yeah, that's what we were talking about. Rivers flow, move towards the ocean. C, let's look at C for practice. And we grow food and plants in rivers. No, we talked about that. That's silly, right? We can't grow food and plants in rivers because, of course, the river is moving, right? And, of course, plants and, and uh, uh, food uh, don't grow in water. They need land. Uh, so that's also silly. There's many reasons why we can't grow food or plants in rivers. The main reason is, of course, because the water is moving. Okay, let's move on to our chart. We've seen this before. In this unit, we're talking about different types of land and different types of water. Let's take a look at the pictures and fill in the labels for those pictures. 
Here we see very high pieces of land. In fact, these are the highest pieces of land on Earth, right? What do we call the highest area of land? We call those, of course, mountains or one mountain. Here we have a picture. Ooh, it's very dry, right? It seems very hot. And if I'm there, I want to drink water, but I can't find any water. There's no or very little water in this area. There's just a lot of sand, right? So this area is called a desert. Okay, that's a desert. Let's move down here. What do we see? We see a piece of land and it's very flat, isn't it? That's our key word or our key uh, point about this type of land is that it's very flat. We call that a plain. Over here, we have an interesting piece of land. It's between mountains and it's a low land. Low land between mountains. What do we call this area? Of course, this area is called a valley. So these are our types of land. How about water? What are our types of water? Now, we have here a very small area of moving water. We can see that the water is moving, but it's small. We can step across it or we could jump across it. So it's a small area of moving water. We call that a stream. But if it's bigger, if it's wider, we can't jump across it. We can't step across it. What do we call it then? We call that a river. So streams and rivers. Streams are small, rivers are big or wide. Okay, the next one down here. This is a very big area of water and the water, you can't drink it, right? It has a lot of salt in it. So it's called an ocean. Ocean has salt water in it. Now here we see uh, an area of water and this is surrounded by land. There's land all around it and it's fresh water. What do we call it? We call that, of course, a lake. Okay, so in this unit, we've been talking about land and water. And we've been talking about the different types of land and the different types of water. We can separate all areas, all places on earth into these two types or two main groups. It's either land or it's water. And there's some very beautiful and very interesting pieces of land. There's also some very interesting uh, and beautiful places of water or areas of water. Okay, well, I hope you've learned a lot in this lesson. We'll see you next time. Take care.